Have you ever heard the saying that the best camera is the one you have in your pocket? I think it's fair to assume that most people watching this video have a smartphone that's often in their pocket, or their purse, or their bag. We use them to communicate, we use them to consume media, and sometimes we use them to take photos. It's convenient to use a camera that's already in your pocket. I almost always have my phone on me, but I usually only have my mirrorless system or DSLR when I'm on a landscape photo trip. The fact of the matter is, my Sony and Nikon cameras do have better sensors than smartphones, and their interchangeable lenses do provide more versatility in the field. Their external controls facilitate rapid use, as it takes a matter of seconds for me to adjust the exposure for a shot. My Sony is a technological marvel, with an electronic screen that provides multiple tools for nailing focus, such as focus peaking and digital zoom when using manual focus. But I'd be remiss not to mention that there are some downsides here. First, these cameras and lenses add up to a lot of bulk. It's a commitment to take them on a trip, along with the usual accessories that I need, such as a tripod, filters, and extra batteries. In addition, this equipment is expensive. It's a large investment to get into, and camera bags or visible cameras run the risk of attracting the attention of thieves. Smartphones are less versatile, lacking true interchangeable lenses and external controls. Companies like Moment make add-on lenses, such as their macro lens and their wide-angle lens, but those are add-ons to your non-interchangeable lens. I've also never used one, so I can't speak to their quality. But smartphones are small, which makes them easier to carry around than traditional cameras. In addition, software such as Halide allows for a user to shoot in RAW and change some exposure values manually. Plus, there's software like Lightroom Mobile that lets you edit those shots right on your phone. I'm making this video because I came across an advertisement on Facebook that intrigued me. To be clear, this video is not sponsored, but I thought the product was interesting enough to highlight on the channel and to consider showcasing if it releases. It's called Fjorden. It's a grip that attaches to your phone and features a two-stage shutter button, a control dial, a multi-function button, and a zoom lever. It also functions as a kickstand. Now, it's important to mention here that this is a Kickstarter project, which means that rewards are not guaranteed. For those unfamiliar with Kickstarter, the basic idea of it is that creators crowdfund their creations through backers who provide pledges for rewards. Unlike a traditional shop, this comes with the inherent risk that these items are not yet ready for production and we might lose the money we pledge. And this is something I'll get into a little bit more later on when I discuss the risks. First, let's take a look at Fjordan. I think this design is sleek and relatively unobtrusive. The company's MagSafe case features a quick release clip, which should allow us to snap the device on and off of our phone cases with ease. It connects to phones via Bluetooth, and the company claims that a CR2430 battery provides up to 12 months of battery life. Their intentions are for this device to be usable over multiple phone generations, which is convenient considering how frequently new phones release. In addition to compatibility with Pro Camera and Obscura, Fjordan describes their own camera app as compatible with all iPhones running iOS 14 or newer, with exposure controls such as EV, shutter speed, and ISO, focus modes such as AI object tracking, AF single, and manual with focus peaking, white balance, lens switching, classic film simulations, raw file format, and other features such as grids and timers. The campaign advertises that backers will receive access to a beta test of the app so that we can provide feedback to influence development. The project's timeline describes tooling, component finalization, and packaging design in August, engineering validation tests and material testing from September through October, design slash product validation tests, regulatory approval and certifications from November to December, launch of production slash assembly and quality control in January, and the start of fulfillment in February. Now let's take a quick interlude so I can discuss my own Kickstarter history. Since November 2014, I have backed 25 projects for a total cost of $2,518.54. I've lost $180 between two of those projects, which never came to fruition. Five of these projects are still active, totaling $458.12. I mention this history because it's important for a couple reasons. First and foremost, I don't want anyone viewing this video to lose money. 
There is an inherent risk to crowdfunding via Kickstarter, and you should only commit to funding a project if you're comfortable losing that money, and if you understand that there could be substantial delays. Two of my active pledges were estimated to deliver in December of 2018, but they're still in active development. And Dateline NBC's Chris Hansen scammed me out of 30 bucks, which I'm still salty about. Now I'm going to analyze this campaign through the lens of a Kickstarter veteran. At the time this video is being recorded, Fjordan has raised $217,102 of a $23,539 goal. It's important to note here that this goal seems exceptionally low for the scope of this product. It's a potential red flag, but there are some justifiable reasons why this might be so low. Kickstarter only provides funding for successful projects, so a lower funding level makes it likelier to acquire funding. Additionally, the price could be low due to outside investors or previously acquired capital. It's also possible that I, a non-manufacturing expert, just don't know how much it costs to manufacture a device like this. Their project budget assigns 52% of their funding to making, 17% to multiple slash other, 16% to funding, 10% to fulfilling, and 5% to taxes and fees. This is also another potential red flag to me. 52% of their initial funding goal is $12,240, which seems low for manufacturing costs. But at current funding levels, that works out to a seemingly much more manageable $112,893. I think it'd help to instill more confidence if this budget were more transparent, such as detailing what multiple slash other is and what funding means in this context. Personally, I don't think this Kickstarter campaign is a scam or fraudulent. My gut feeling is that the initial funding goal was intentionally low, with the company hoping to shatter their funding goal, which they have. I'm intrigued by this project and fascinated with the idea that I might be able to have some manual camera controls for my phone. Now, I'm not making this video to encourage viewers to back this product. Because I think if you do, you should do your due diligence and make an informed decision about whether or not you want to support this. Rather, I'm making this because I hope to start a conversation about the potential behind this project. And I'm also interested in documenting this Kickstarter as it develops. Whether it turns out to be fulfilled or a failure, I'd like to make a follow-up video to discuss how this concludes.